So hi everyone, my name is Carl Gurney. I am on staff here at St. Paul Catholic Newman Center. I think officially my job description is that I am the coordinator of liturgy and music and I help with scheduling volunteers. And in these kind of strange times that we find ourselves, I've been helping logistically and uh, with our media and uh, making sure that a lot of these types of things, these videos get out to you. Um, I'm behind the camera a lot for our live streams and that kind of a thing. But, but today, uh, following the video that I hope you were able to watch from Father Paul and um, other videos to come, I, uh, in this upcoming season as we anticipate Advent and Christmas, I, I, I wanted to um, have the honor of sharing with you a little bit of my faith and what, what motivates me to serve, not only in this position, but how, how uh, deeply I mean to take my faith uh, in this world and given the variety of opportunities that I have to do that throughout my life. So those of you who I have the pleasure of knowing here at the parish might know that I was not raised or born a Catholic. Um, I come from a very deeply faith-filled Christian family. My father actually was a Baptist minister for about half of my life and I was baptized, dunked, immersed, whatever you want to call it, uh, when I was 11 years old at a little church in downtown San Jose, California called Primera Iglesia Bautista Hispanoamericana, so First Baptist Spanish American Church, Hispanic American Church. Uh, my family's bilingual. My father is um, Anglo American, Polish, and Scottish Irish background. My mother, Mexican American. Both families, both grandparent sets, uh, missionaries in the Baptist Church. So kind of a deep, deep evangelical spirit there. Um, I was raised that with with my faith and my family and my social circles being pretty much um, coextensive right so so my I felt most at home when I was at church when I was celebrating and singing and uh, especially from about age 10 onwards actually playing music in church so I started out on the congas and I graduated to the bass guitar. I just like my dad kind of taught me where to place my fingers. A lot of these these songs, especially the contemporary worship songs, they're not that technically difficult. So I was able to pick it up fairly quickly. And then I, uh, for Christmas, my eighth grade Christmas, um, when I was like 13 years old, I asked for a guitar for Christmas and I, I got an acoustic guitar, a little squire that broke down about nine months after I started using it. but. Nevertheless, that was my trajectory, and I have been playing music in some sort of uh, capacity for the sake of church ever since. Literally, I don't think there's been a single year where I have not um, been using my fingers and my voice to glorify God in some way. And, that, and that's, that's a, a deep blessing for me because I think it placed not only a sense of ownership and empowerment that I, I could use these things for the sake of the people of God, but also that I could make it my own, that, that it didn't have to just be me listening to Christian music or watching uh, movies that were, or, or media or that kind of thing that were supposed to kind of form my faith, but that I could actually participate in that as well as I took that skill, talent, gift more seriously. It wasn't until college that I was really deeply immersed in a community, a spiritual community, where I was exposed to a rich diversity of Christian traditions. So in college, I became a part of a fellowship called InterVarsity at my campus. And in it, I was exposed to Charismatics and Pentecostals, mainline Christians. And uh, several of my closest friends were Roman Catholics. And these are, we, we kind of all have the commonality of not really feeling like we fit in in, in our youth groups or the congregations we were a part of. I, I've moved around a lot in my life. If you ask me where I'm from, I'll, I'll give you the names of about 10 different cities. That's, that's kind of the uh, uh, function of, of my dad being in the ministry on one hand and in academia on the other. And so moving across the country, moving from city to city, that was, my, uh, that was me, me growing up. And uh, so college was that time where I was able to really form, my faith was formed in the context of that diverse community. And I think for me that was an important question as well because given what I told you about my family background and the cultural diversity within my own family and frankly some of the more difficult 
aspects of that to reconcile. Like for example, the fact that my uh, grandmother on my dad's side was a missionary to the Navajo and Zuni Indians of New Mexico, whereas my mother's family, we actually descend from indigenous peoples in New Mexico and Mexico. And because of the history of indigenous peoples and missionary activity in the Southwest, a lot of that stuff kind of started bugging me and like I, I didn't quite know what to do with that. So it was helpful to kind of work through some of those questions with other um, people. And after college, I found myself really deeply desiring more stability. And f for that sake, I started going, um, the, the job that I worked after college, I had a good, I, I usually worked evenings. And so I had a good part of the middle of the day open. And so I would walk down the street to the mission in San Luis Obispo, beautiful uh, historic mission church. And uh, I, I saw that they had a, a service, a, a, a mass. Um, I was familiar with mass. My, my parents had actually taken me at several points in my younger life just because in the Baptist tradition, there's not really such a thing as liturgical seasons. And so they wanted to kind of expose me to that, but also because I think that that nourished their own spirituality as well. And, um, I, I, as kind of an aside, my dad's bookshelves were lined with authors uh, like Carl Rahner and Thomas Merton and Dorothy Day, and so I knew a lot of those names as well, uh, kind of big, big players in 20th century Catholicism um, that were formative for my family. And so I kind of was open to that. So back in this chapel, I, I was just really struck by the intense peace that I felt that like in the middle of my busy life, I, you know, I'm a young 20 something. I have all these existential like issues. I had just gone through a really um, painful romantic breakup and I, I just felt this deep need for God to like speak comfort into my heart. Um, and, and I found it strangely enough with a group of like 40 daily mass regulars at the 12 p.m. Um, mass at the mission San Luis Obispo singing their like simple kind of hymn to Immaculate Mary um, the, the, participating in the liturgy parts of it which seemed familiar but also a little bit um, not strange but just just kind of hidden behind the other side of some sense of like I wasn't getting the whole picture of what was going on and that was okay with me for the time being but uh, you know how it goes right over time it, it, the Holy Spirit grabs you and you feel that that poll and I started asking those questions and I made friends with the seminarian there who used to be a professor of philosophy at Gonzaga. So he was really getting into conversation with me. I, I loved it. Another one of the friends that I mentioned from my community through InterVarsity really walked alongside of me at that point in my life. And I went through RCIA at the mission and I was initiated, confirmed, first communion on January 26th, 2013. Um, and the, a year later, I moved to Fresno. Um, and ever since then, I've worked in urban ministry and I went to graduate school, but I knew that I wanted to be uh, part of a parish in a Catholic community that, that took the faith of young people seriously. And so that's why I knew the Newman Center was uh, uh, the right place for me. And I was, I was just initially impressed by the the intergenerational, the diversity, the cultural diversity, linguistic diversity, uh, the, the sense of, of welcome that I got, um, the, the seriousness to, to which we take our vocation to young people, young professionals, college uh, folks, that, that was really important to me because it was so formative in, in my life. I knew that those years were so critical and that reaching out to young people really does make a transformative difference. So for me, in my journey to the, to the Catholic Church, it's been a, an incredibly um, wonderful process by which I find that all of those disparate pieces, pieces that I'm curious about, my, my history, my family, the, the, the dark corners, the, the, the seemingly irreconcilable things that, that, are, that I find are parts of me, culturally, uh, relationally, or otherwise, and I, f I find that, that they can be still and, and be held together. And for me, uh, the Catholic Church is a place where all of these hold together, where, where we see all of the, the people of every tribe, nation, and tongue um, around the table. And, that, that's the, and it's not just a metaphor, right? Like that's, that's, that's the center of our practice. 
And it's really meaningful for me as somebody who's grown up in different places around this country, who I, I've been privileged enough to travel around the world. Um, it, it's just an extra grace to know that I can join people wherever I go. And I've done this, I, I've visited parishes in, in different countries and been able to celebrate um, w uh, the, the beautiful sacraments of our faith um, at the table with these people uh, who don't look like me or talk like me. And that's, that's really healing for me in the sense of uh, that, that I can be at peace for the person that God created me. And also in the sense of my continuing vocation. Uh, it, I, 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 I have family who are not Catholic. I'm, I'm married to a non-Catholic. And, and I see that, that God's grace extends even as I am called to, to take that which I am privileged and blessed to receive at the altar and bring it into the world into my marriage, into my family, into my neighborhood. Um, and, and that's a deep privilege, and it's one that I hope extends beyond my efforts to, to make the live stream good or, or pick out the music on Sunday or call you if you're a volunteer, um, as you may have, have, have uh, interacted with me before. And so my Catholic faith is something that I, I don't just view as my own. I view it as, as a gift, as a grace, as a practice, as something that I share. With, um, with people all around the world, and it's precious, and uh, I, I can only hope to see where that goes from here on out. So thank you uh, for listening to this bit of my story, and uh, God bless you.